Explain how lying to Greg Norman essentially got you your first big break. Um, well, I started, you know, caddying for Greg. And uh, at, the, at the time he asked me how old I was. And, uh, you know, I said I was 20. How um, old were you actually? 17. You know, so I think I was 17 or 18 and told him I was 20. So after a couple of years, you know, he's thinking I'm 22, 23. And um, we were at an airport in Hong Kong and his wife said to, you know, Greg, you know, give me your passport and, and tickets to Greg and myself. She, you know, she'll go and get the tickets and check us in and we'll get the luggage and you know, no problem. And, that, and she obviously must have looked at, the, you know, the date of birth on my passport. Were you thinking of that when you gave oh, it to I had no her? idea. Okay. I mean, this, it ended into my head. And, uh, you know, so we all sat down after we'd all been checked in that and she, and she asked me how old I was, you know, so I'd always, you know, would told them that I was three years older than what I was. And uh, I think at this particular point in time, I was probably, you know, uh, actually 20, but I'd already told them I was 23 years ago. So I was telling them, you know, I'm 23. And she said, well, you know, how come your date of birth is 1963? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, we had a great laugh about that. And I said, well, you know, I, I didn't feel at the time that, you know, when I had a said to my 17 that you know, he was going to employ a 17 year old. So, um, you know, it was just... What did Norman say? Oh, I thought, you know, we still laugh about it today. He thought it was great. You know, I mean, age didn't have anything to do with, you know, how good or how poorly you could do the job. I mean, sure. um, you know, if I was 17 or 20, you probably couldn't tell the difference. I hadn't been to school for a long time and I'd been, you know, caddying for a couple of years already. So right. streetwise, if you like, so... What was Greg Norman like to work with? No, I, you know, I, have, I have a lot to thank for Greg. You know, I caddied for a few players from time to time when I first started out, but you know, he was the first main job I had and obviously, you know, first very high profile player. And you know, he taught me the ropes. Um, you know, exceptional player, exceptional work ethic and um, what did he teach you? Well, you know, just ha ha you know, how how the caddy. I mean he was a not not so much how the caddy, but um, you know, how to do things and how to say things and when not to say things and when to say things. Um, Greg, very aggressive player, and, and, and liked things his way, and of how to do things. And you know, you had to do things his way, and, and, and he he would make it very clear when it was time for you to talk and time for you not to talk. And you know, that he 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 was um, you know at it, or he was you know hugely responsible for for forming me as a caddy and um, shaping me you know, to learn about the game. And, you know, he was an exceptional player himself, obviously. But, um, you know, he was great. Um, he was a tough guy to caddy for. I mean, I'd be honest in saying that. Not the easiest guy to, to caddy for. Some players are easier to caddy for than other players. How, how was he tough? He just, you know, very demanding on the course. And well, Yeah, uh, I mean, what would, what, what does that mean, very demanding? Like, what... oh, he was very hard on himself. And, um, you know, he, he, he just... You know, it's kind of it's very difficult to explain and how it works between a player and a caddy. It's quite an in-depth sort of thing, but you know, it, it basically, some players are easy to caddy for, and some players are not easy to caddy for, and some players are very difficult to caddy for. And um, you know, I was fortunate to caddy for him for a lot in Australia in his home country, and you know, those were very memorable days. I loved, um, you know, back then. Caddying was fun. It was just wasn't quite as serious as it is now. He ultimately ends up firing you. Uh, what led to the firing? When, when you caddy for a player and um, you become very close and you spend a lot of time with pros, you know, in a lot of instances the caddy spends more time um, with the player than anybody else with them, you know, coach, wife, whoever it may be. And you can get too close and, you know, that was my, that's what happened with me and Greg. Um, he, he took a great interest to in me and and, and was looking after me very, you know, I sp stayed with him a lot. And But, you know, you, you get very comfortable with each other and, and become great mates and get very friendly. So when it came to on the golf course, you know, instead of, you know, separating that friendship and going to the golf course and, and realising, you know, you, you're working as employee-employer, um, you know, I, I didn't separate that. And, you know, he would say things to me on the course and, you know, I'd say things back that were inappropriate. And, but it was a great learning curve. That that you know that 
shaped me right there for the rest of my career that it was a big mistake and you know I didn't know I was only young that's just sure. the way I did it and he actually tried to rehire you but you declined why decline yeah well I mean you know I'm a very loyal sort of person and extremely loyal person and from Greg Norman I was very fortunate to go and carry for Ray Floyd and once again you know caring for another guy that um, was extremely good to me and Greg wanted me to go back and carry for him um, but I, you know I couldn't let Ray down I mean he'd been so good to me I had no reason to leave him he'd been a, you know exemplary to me and him and his family took me in too and um, he had three young children and two boys that played golf and you know I was taking an interest in their golf too they were just young boys at the time and they were very good golfers so I enjoyed watching them grow up and play golf uh, Robert uh, Junior, uh, Robert and Ray Floyd Jr. watched them, you know, take up the game of golf, and you know, I had a lot of fun with them. So, you know, I, I, I was just loyal. You know, I couldn't do, just couldn't do that.